Hello, I'm Nigel Griffiths, I work at IBM in the UK. Welcome to part three of this series and a hands-on with discs for PowerVS running a small Airx virtual machine for £2 a day or $3 or €3. Euros. Part one was getting you started and checking the prices were actually right. Part two was doing the first VM live and getting it on the internet. Now we're looking at discs. So here's the virtual machine we created yesterday. PowerVS told us that it's a two gig drive. If we look down in here, we can see LSPV. It's got the root VG in it, and there's just the one disc, as we'd expect. And if we look inside the root VG, we can see in here that it is 20 gigabytes in size, which is pretty small. You can buy a USB memory key for $5 with that much disk space in it. We're rapidly going to run out of room, even if we just wanted to upgrade AIX with a service pack, for example, that just wouldn't do. We actually have uh, 7 gigabytes not used at the moment, so we can grow a few file systems. But if you look down here, we have a slash homes coming in at 32 meg. So here we are, back to um, IBM Cloud. And we actually got some information down in here. I have uh, two resources in here, which are my virtual machines. Nope, oh, here's my two services in here. This is Texas. If we wanted to get back to here directly, don't forget up here, resource list. I'm going to go back to Texas. I know that's where my virtual machine from yesterday is. Okay, so here it is, part two. We're running the part three demo now. In here, what can we actually do? Shut it down, restart it. No, nope, none of that. So let's dive into this and get the details of this particular virtual server instance or VM. Down in here, we can see we've got one disk attached to it. And we can't actually highlight that. We can't uh, detach it, for example, over here. Well, it's the bootable disk and this one is running. So it's not going to let you do that. Okay, so once we know this number in here, part two is easy to remember. Boot zero, because it's the only disk we've got. And if we go up in here to storage volumes, we can see our volumes. This will be all of them that are available. Uh, and here is the one we actually uh, interested in here. And again, we can't click on this um, and we can't throw it away because it's actually in use. But we can, it took me a while to notice this, we can hover in here, this is uh, not grayed out, we can edit this disk. Okay, and uh, yes, tier three, bootable 20 gigabytes. We didn't select that, that's forced on us because that's the size of the image with AIX running in it. If we click down in here, oh, we can any size we want. And uh, scroll down, we can make it two terabytes and it says it's going to cost us two hundred dollars a month well that's too rich for me and um, let's go back up here and we'll go for 50 gig and that's going to cost us three dollars a month for 50 gig so we'll save that operation okay and it's successful that's good now we go back to my LPAR in here and see what it says. As VG root VG and it says it's 20 gigabytes. So we have to give X a clue to actually go and have a look at its disks and uh, refresh its idea of what's going on. And that's the old famous config manager command. Go back and look at the size of the disk and it hasn't changed. So let's change the change one group minus G root VG. And it's saying we're not quite the right size, but we've now got to 51 gigabytes. Well, there's a bit of rounding down. That's good. That's what we wanted. Now we can increase the size of the AIX file systems to take up that new space. All this course we've done live. Let's clear the screen. Let's grow slash home to 10 gigabytes. There we are. So the root file system is a gig. The home is 10 gig and temp is one gig. Now let's add some disks to our virtual machine in PowerVC. Double check it's the right virtual machine. If we slide down a little bit, we can see the attached volumes. Well, there's just the one disk, the one we changed to 50 gig. It's bootable, so as expected. 
over here we can see create volume. Let's go for that. So let's call these. And let's make them keep them fairly small, 40 gig, but let's do three of them. $12 a month. So that's worked. We'll do a quick refresh of the screen. There we go. The slide up, and we can see the three new disks. We put the numbers one, two, and three at the end. Forty gigabytes each. Now we'll go back to AIX and get those online. Config Manager. I think that's the right command this time. And there we go. Three extra disks. Going to go good old Smitty LVM. Volume group, yep, and a volume group, an original one, data VG names, it's control four, then you do a escape seven to mark them up, and that's going to do it. Okay. Come out and have a new volume group, and it has three data VG disks in it, and we'll create a file system. Switch e, JFS2. And enhance file system, yep, to data VG. They're 40 gigs each, aren't they? So and three of them. Let's make the units gigabytes. We'll make it a hundred gigabytes in slash scratch and we'll mount it. G of minus M and scratch isn't there because it hasn't mounted it yet. So so we'll just mount that now. There it is, say 100 gigabytes. Really quick, isn't it? Now, if I go in here and unmount the file system, then export the volume group so that I've no longer got any interest in the volume group, and then delete the devices, I can go back to Power VS and remove those disks from this virtual machine and add them to another virtual machine. Here we are, back to where we were before, and we can actually do a detach operation here. And it gives a quick warning that you'll still be charged for detached volumes. You have to delete them if you want to avoid charges. Well, successfully detached. Left it a few minutes and coming back to look at our partition two. And we can see down in here, there's just the one disc here. We go back up to our storage volumes. We can see the three discs. Now, while you weren't watching the video for a split second there, I deleted those three discs that we were using in the previous exercise. Now we're just gonna create a new disc. So it's not connected to a virtual machine. So we're in the storage volumes in here and obviously create volume up here. I'm going to use this as a master repository. You'll notice in here that I could put this into a different tier. So we're going to use tier three. And I want it to be uh, fairly big, let's say 100 gig, quantity one, that'll do fine. And we'll just create that. So this is uh, an independent disk. It's not actually connected to uh, any of their virtual machines or virtual server instances. Okay, so it's done the create there, and here it is. That was nice and quick, wasn't it? 
just a bit of this space is no not particularly a, a hard deal is it now I actually want to attach that to a particular virtual machine so that I can save some data to it and then and then unattach it so how do I do that well first of all note up in here that if I want to delete something that's not attached to a virtual machine this little button is here it says delete so I click on there it says are you really sure about this because you can never undo this operation so we won't do that now but now you know where to do that so let's attach the repository to my disk test 2 virtual machine so we'll go to my virtual servers and we'll drill into the details by clicking on its name It's actually currently running, and here we have the attach volume. So we'll click on here and it'll say what disks have you got that are not attached. Well, this is one that's already connected. There's only one that's not attached to something else, and we just say attach volume, and it's done. Then we can start accessing that volume later on, as we've done before. We'll use Config Manager to get it online and then import the volume group. Then we'll map the file systems and we can access the files or do backups into the file system. Oop, we haven't actually got the extra disk here yet, so let's do a quick refresh of the screen. So there's the master repo. When we're finished with the master repository, we could then detach it and use it somewhere else as we've seen before. Well, that's it for part three, hands-on with disks. In part four, we'll be looking at the open source toolbox, which has already been connected to our virtual servers. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this or learned something, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe.